welcome to Global Community Church this morning. And we are so glad you decided to worship with us this morning. We pray, we sincerely pray that God will bless you today. He will shower his blessing over you. Yes, God has already given us his word and God says, no matter what come your way, I will be there. to you. I am glad to see you. I hope that you are glad to see me as well. Thank you so much. We are in the middle of summer. I mean, the heat is on. Uh, this is the time that I normally feel like just jumping on a plane and going off to the Caribbean, one of the islands, and jump in that crystal clear water and come back when the heat is over. <laughs> you know that's not that easy to do. Plane fares are very expensive. And so we are just going to have to stay around and enjoy the summer as best as we can. Today I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 5. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 5. We want to look at verses 22 to 29 as we continue um, discussing the nature of the fear of God. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verses 22 to 29. Here's what the text says. These are the commandments the Lord proclaimed in the loud voice to your assembly there on the mountain from out of the fire. The cloud and the deep darkness, and he added nothing more then he wrote them on two stone tablets and gave them to me. That's Moses speaking. When you heard the voice of out of the darkness, while the mountain was ablaze with fire, all the leading men of your tribes and your elders came to me, and you said, The Lord our God has shown us his glory and his majesty. And we have heard his voice from the fire. Today we have seen that a man can live even if God speaks with him. But now, why should we die? This, this great fire will consume us. And we will die if we hear the voice of the Lord our God any longer. For what mortal man has ever heard the voice of the living God speaking out of fire as we have and survive. Go near and listen to all that the Lord our God says. Then, t then tell us whatever the Lord our God tells you. We will listen and obey. Verse 28. The Lord heard you when you spoke to me. And the Lord said to me, I have heard what these people said to you. Everything they said was good. Oh, that their hearts would be inclined to fear me and keep all my commandments always so that it might go well with them and with their children. Let us pray. Father, thank you for this, your word. It has been preserved for us that we can learn from the examples of our forefathers. Father, I pray that you would allow the word of God to speak to us today, that the Holy Spirit of God would enable us to understand and give us insight into your word. Speak to us through your word. Your word is truth. And Father, may the Spirit of God Open up our hearts to understand. May he give us the desire and the power to obey you. We thank you and we praise you for we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Several years ago, Michael W. Smith wrote a song entitled Awesome God. 
Part of the song says, our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. The thought that our God is an awesome God moves us to fear him. Realizing he is the one whose very words created everything out of nothing. When God speaks, the mountains tremble and the universe bends and air to listen and obey. God is the one who penetrates the darkness of our world. God is an awesome God, and he must be feared. One of, the central, one of the central sins of our age, which gives birth to other sins, is that often, and even in church, we have such a low view of God, that his might doesn't seem to, his might and his grandeur doesn't seem to fear our hearts anymore. Doesn't seem to strike fear in our hearts anymore. We take our sins very lightly. And that is a symptom of the fact that we do not fear him. We do not tremble, of course, when we say fear him, we are talking about that trembling and that dread of the awesomeness of God. We must tremble at his power and his majesty. But the trembling that I am talking about is not the trembling of the demons. For scripture tells us that the demons also believe and tremble. Rather, the tremble that we do before God is the tremble of those who understand that God's, understand God's wrath toward us has been satisfied at the cross of Calvary where Jesus, our Savior, died. Our God is to be feared. And so as we, you've journeyed with us with, on this series entitled The Fear of God, The Vanishing Virtue in the Life of the Church, we have come to certain strategic points. The first point we have said is that uh, the fear of God is neglected uh, in the culture today. We've said uh, that the fear of God is also neglected in the life of the church today. So we've dealt with the, what we've asked, answered the question, whatever has happened to the fear of God, and we've said the fear of God is neglected. And we've come upon another strategic point, and we are asking ourselves, what does it really mean to fear God? We are trying to understand the nature of the fear of God. What does the concept of the fear of God really mean? And in order to bring us to a clear understanding, I've said that we must dispel certain fears. We must, so we must dispel certain myths. Three of those myths. Myth number one, we said there is the myth that the fear of God is an outdated relic of the past. And we said that is a myth that we must dismiss because the fear of God is something for today. We've also dismissed or dispelled the myth that says that the fear of God is a negative, undesirable virtue. We said it is not a negative. It is indeed a positive. It is really the foundation of our relationship with God. Then thirdly, we said that the fear of the Lord, the myth number three, which says that the fear of the Lord is figurative, or symbolic language. And we said, no, the fear of God, fear of God literally means fear. It is not symbolic. It is not figurative language. 
And so we have tried to caution you that we must stay away from downplaying the actual word fear and use words like respect and reverence and awe. And even those words do indeed convey the, the concept of the fear of God. We've said they are too narrow. The fear of God is more than just simple respect. So we are trying to come to, to, to define the concept of the fear of God. And we said last time the essence of godly fear. The essence of godly fear. We went back to the Old Testament. And we have said that word that is translated fear, the word has, the word yira back in Old Testament, it has several meanings, but it contains a mixed feeling of dread and reverence and awe and wonder and amazement. In the New Testament, we came across the word for fear, phobia. And we know of different phobias. And so this is in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the concept of fear, its roots, that's where we get, we begin to build the meaning of the fear of God. I told you that the fear of God for the believer, it is not the fear of eternal punishment because when you come to Christ, your, the, your, the wages of your sin was passed on to Jesus Christ. So you and I, when we come to Christ, we are free from the thought of the punishment of eternal fire for our sins. Our punishment was laid on the cross of Jesus Christ. At the same time, it is not just a polite fear, a, a polite word of just mere respect that you have for God. I remember when I was growing up, was attending the Catholic Church, that there was that respect that was there for as you enter the house of God. There was dead silence because people knew that you came to worship God and there was that deep respect for the house of God. And I'm saying here yeah, that the fear of God does involve that disrespect for the house of God, but it is a deep respect for God himself. The fear of God does not mean that we cringe and we crawl for fear that the Father will destroy us or by for fear that God will take away or not fulfill his promises to us. So we've said the fear of God, the elements of the fear of God, two important elements. We said, number one, the fear of God does include dread or trembling before God. The fear of God does involve dread or terror or trembling before the almighty power and presence of God. You see, there is a fear of dread and there is a fear of terror. Those two components come together. There is a fear that consists of being afraid that elicits anguish and terror. And there is a fear of reverence that elicits confidence and love. The prophet Isaiah brought those two points together when he said in Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 13, It is the Lord of hosts whom you should regard as holy. And he shall be your fear, and he shall be your dread. Isaiah says, God must, we must have an element of fear and of dread of God understanding who he is and understanding the magnitude of his power. Then we run across a great saint named A.W. Tozer. And he tries to give us a balanced view as to what the fear of the Lord is and Mr. Toza said this, he says, the greatness of God arouses fear within us, but his goodness encourages us not to be afraid of him. I like that. 
He says, the greatness of God arise, arouses fear within us, but the goodness of God encourages us not to be afraid of him. And then he says this, to fear and not to be afraid, that is the paradox of our faith. That is the paradox of our faith. I was listening to a, a sermon by a, a prof, um, he's, I think he's professor of, uh, professor over at the Master's Seminary, great teacher named Stephen Lawson. I was listening to a great sermon on the fear of God from him, and I'll, I'll give you a couple of quotes from him later on. But here's one of the things that Dr. Lawson says concerning the fear of God, concerning that balanced view of the dread and terror of God, and at the same time, the reverence and awe of God. Here's what he says. When we fear God, there is a trembling on the inside. Not that you have laid hold of God, but that God has laid hold of you. He holds you in the palm of his hand and that he has ordained the day you would enter the earth and that he numbered all of your days before there was even one of them. He says that your whole life is in his hands. In him, you live and move and have your being. God does not even have to take your life. He just has to stop giving it. The fear of the Lord. Right, a balance between having both components, the components of dread and the component of reverence. The writer of 1 Chronicles chapter 16, beginning at verse 28, tells us this. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come before him. He says, worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. And he says, tremble before him all the earth. Yes, my friend, the concept of the fear of God does involve trembling in the presence of the majestic magnitude, God, magnitude of God's power. The fear of the Lord involves dread. We should fear God because he is the almighty creator who can discipline us should we rebel against him. We must fear him because he is the holy God. He is holy and awesome. And in his presence, there must be, as we enter his presence, there must be the, the inspiring fear of God. God is to be feared. John Murray says this about the fear of God. He says, he says terror and dread of God's holiness is the first aspect of the fear of God. Terror and dread of God's holiness is the first aspect of the fear of God, but it also includes reverence, that is, veneration and honor of God's majesty. So he says, the fear of God contains two elements. Number one, the element of dread or trembling in the presence of God. Secondly, the fear of God does include reverence or awe. Reverence or awe. We stop at the book of Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28 and 29. Here is what it says, my friend. It says, therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably. And here it is, with reverence and awe. For our God is a consuming fire. 
since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so come to worship God. And the other two that we must bring in our worship is reverence and awe. And he says the reason why, because our God is a consuming fire. There is reverence, there is awe, there is dread, and there is te- trembling, and there is reverence before God. There is a balanced view concerning the fear of God. Reverence, that deep respect, that awful respect that we have, knowing that we are forever always in the presence of God. is the, the sense of wonder, it's the sense of amazement that grips our hearts when we realize who, whose presence we are in and we think of his majesty, we think of his greatness, we are struck by the fear of God, a deep reverence for him. September 25th, 1513, a conqueror or conquistador named Vasco known as the Balboa he crossed the isthmus of Panama and discovered the vast Pacific Ocean. Can you just imagine Vasco known as the Balboa on that day when he saw the majestic Pacific Ocean for the first time? Can you just imagine the amazement, the astonishment, and the awe of looking up or looking down on the vastness of the Pacific Ocean. You and, my, you and I, it is that kind of reference that we are talking about when we realize the vastness of God, the greatness of God, the awesomeness of God, and we see ourselves as little, as, as of no significance, as we compare ourselves to the majesty of Almighty God. Reverence, my friend, is the instinctive response of everyone who encounters the awesome, magnificence, and splendor of God Almighty. So we are saying then that godly fear contains elements both of shrinking back and at the same time drawing close. We shrink back because we realize we are in the presence of the awesome, amazing God, and yet we come forward to him because Jesus Christ has made provision where the scripture tells us that we can also enter the presence of God. This is not the kind of dread that paralyzes a person to inaction, but it is neither a sort of polite respect. It is an understanding of the true nature of God. We look at his grandness. We look at his grandeur. We look at his majesty. And at the same time, we look at our insignificance, and we are struck with that deep reverence and awe in the presence of God Almighty. In Exodus chapter 20, Scripture tells us this. When the people saw the thunder and the lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain in smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, speak to us yourself and we will listen. But do not have God speak to us for we will die. In other words, there was a trembling in their heart. There was a deep respect in their hearts because they realized that they were in the presence of God. And they were trembling at being in the presence of God. And God came And God said to Moses, the people have said, right, I will speak to you and you will speak to them. God said that it is good that they should fear me so that it will keep them from sin. Both elements of trembling and a deep respect for God. God did not say to them, do not fear me. God says it is good that they have this fear of me that will keep them from sinning. The fear 
of God is a sense of profound awe and intimidation as we see the power and holiness of God that scripture describes as a consuming fire. To fear God, to revere God, is to fear him in the fullest sense of the word. To fear God is to have a wholesome dread of ever displeasing the Lord. That implies our love for him as well as our awe of him. We love him because he first loved us. We love him because we see how he displayed his love for us on the cross of Calvary. Yet we understand that there is a great distance between us and God. And there is also a deep reverence and a trembling before God. My friend, understand God isn't to be trifled with. To be reverent means living with the constant conscious awareness that we're in the presence of an awesome and a holy God. We must fear God. So this is what the fear of God is. The opposite of fearing God is to be flippant, is to be cavalier, trite, trivial, highly casual, in our relationship with God, it is to be frivolous in the presence of God. And I'm afraid too often that is where we have gone. We have become flippant. We have become frivolous. We have somehow gotten to the point where we think that we are so on the level with God that we do not address him correctly and we do not stand in awe in his presence. I am afraid, my friend, that modern Christianity has adopted a Jesus is my buddy attitude. It grossly downplays the holiness and power and righteous wrath of the sovereign God. You see, when we say that we reverence God, we are not, we, we come to the point where we have such a deep respect and an awe and astonishment in the presence of God that we never refer to God as the big guy in the sky or the man upstairs. We come with reverence and deep respect for God, realizing that just with one word, he can strike us dead. So you and I, we must fear God. It is not a relic of the past. It is something that is for our good. It is the foundation of a vital, vibrant relationship with God. So let's bring it all together. Let's see if we can sort of sum up a, 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 com a comprehensive definition of the concept of fearing God. So what I want to do is to parade before you a couple of quotes by noted scholars concerning the fear of God, trying to define it. It's a hard concept to define, but scripture is loaded with the concept of the fear of God. So let me just give you a couple of quotes, and it would be good if you could write those. It, I found them to be very, very helpful as I try to understand the concept of the fear of God. Here is the first one by Dr. Stephen Lawson. He says this in defining the fear of God. He says, the fear of God indicates that you stand in awe of him. There is trembling in your soul and that you take God very seriously. In fact, you take God more seriously than you take anyone else or anything else. You have a respect for him, a reverence for him, and there is a state of wonder in your heart toward God. The fear of God, he says, the fear of God is the worshiping heart in which God seems excessively big 
and very great, and we seem exceedingly small in comparison. The fear of God is standing in awe of God, kneeling in adoration before God, bowing in humility before God. It is being overwhelmed with his infinite perfections. The fear of God, my friend, a deep, wholesome respect for God, trembling in the presence of Almighty God. I found this other quote by Pastor Colin Smith concerning the fear of God. He says this, the fear of God is a cord of three strands. The fear of God is a, is a, the fear of God is a cord of three strands. He added strands, the splendor of God's glory, the reality of God's judgment, and the wonder of God's love. He says this, when a person grasps the splendor, the reality, and the wonder, he or she will be brought into that good that the Bible calls the fear of God. We are helping you to understand that the fear of God is that affectionate reverence by which the child of God, enabled or empowered by the Holy Spirit, is the Holy Spirit gives us the desire and the power to bend ourselves in humility and carefully in the presence of God. Understanding those two things, God loves us, but God hates our sins. God has brought himself close to us for the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ so that now there is no longer any condemnation to us who are in Christ Jesus. But at the same time, we do not take just be casual about our relationship with God. We understand the majesty of our God. You see, think about this. God's wrath is so bitter and his love is is so sweet and from that there springs from that an earnest desire to please him and because of the the danger of coming short from his, from our own weakness and temptations there is a holy watchfulness and fear that he might that we might not sin against him because we love him and because we know that he has done so much for us there is that watchfulness there is that vigilance in the presence of god we do not want to sin against him we want to obey him So fearing God, it's a reverential awe of him by which we are ever, we are ever, ever conscious of his presence with us. And my friend, we seek, we, we ever seek to please him. Our aim and our end in life is to submit to his will, to submit to his commandments and to do those things that are, his, to do those things that are pleasing in, in his sight because we love him and we stand in awe of him. That is the fear of the Lord. Just to end us today and we'll come back and finish up next time. But this little song just came to my mind as we think of being ever conscious of being in the presence of the all watchful eyes of God. I learned this little song in Sunday school. It says, oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. For the Father up above, looking down in tender love. Oh, be careful, little eyes, what you see. And then it says, oh, be careful, little ears, what you hear. Oh, be careful, little hands, what you do. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Because our Father up above is looking down in tender love. Oh, be careful what you do and what you say and what you hear and what you see. Because our heart's attitude is because we realize we are ever in the presence of the all-seeing, majestic God. And we are, there is a holy carefulness. There there is a holy vigilance 
fearing God, trembling in his presence, reverencing him, because as the songwriter says, our God is an awesome God. He reigns in heaven above. Father, thank you for your word. Teach us, O oh God, to truly fear you, to stand in awe of you, to tremble in your presence, knowing that your abundant love has showered upon us many, many blessings. Yet, Lord, we are ever aware of your holiness. And, Lord, this is a guard, this is a rail that keeps us from sin. Teach us to fear your name. We thank you. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. To close us up on defining the fear of God, I want next time to display before you a testimony of some men back then who demonstrate the fear of God. So please join us next time. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you.